Many of the things that we do in Notion can be automated. For example, creating subtasks when one of our tasks reaches a certain state, or onboarding a client once we have closed a deal, or even get notified by our CRM in Notion whenever we need to reach out to someone. So if we were to do all these things manually, it will take a lot of our time. But there is a fix. I have found an app that astonishingly nobody is talking about and that is going to solve all these problems. So in this video, I'm going to show you which is this app that has become crucial in all the work that I do for other businesses and even for myself. Let's get into it. Okay, so which is the problem? As you may know, Notion has an API that has allowed apps like Zapier or Automate.io to automate a lot of stuff that we can do using Notion. And the way that these apps work is by triggering some automations. So something has to happen in order for those automations to start working. But the problem with Notion is that if we go to any of these automation tool, for example, Automate.io, we can see that the trigger for these automations is whenever we create a new database item or whenever we update a database item. So for example, for an example, as the one that I told you in the beginning, whenever we change the status of a task, we create a certain amount of subtasks. If we were to use this trigger of updated database item, which would work, but the problem is that we will be triggering this automation every time that we update an entry on a database. So let's say that just 1% of those times are gonna be the time in which we really want this automation to be triggered. The other ones are gonna be filtered out. And the problem here comes because these automation tools charge us by the number of triggers that has happened. So this will end up being quite expensive and therefore not doable. So how are we gonna be solving this problem? With an app called The Gist. So this app basically what it's doing is listening within Notion databases to a certain event instead of listening to every event that is going on in a database. So therefore we can just be listening to the moment in which the status becomes in progress, for example. And that can be the trigger for our automation. So we are gonna save a lot of money in our automation tools because we don't have to pay for every time we update something in a database. Just those times that are really what we are looking for. And the way that this app works, it is very easy. So we will just have to create an account and then come here to my rules and create a new rule. I have already four. Let me show you one of them. And inside of here, we will have to give access to the gist, to the database that we want the gist to have access to, of course. And this is done very, very easily. If you have already built any automation, you already know how to do it. But if not, you will just come to Notion, open the database, and in share, you will have to add the gist over here. Okay, you can just do this after you have set up your the gist account and given the gist access to your Notion. And once you give the gist access to the database, that database is going to appear here. If it doesn't appear, just click the refresh button and it will appear. Okay, so we will just have to select the database that we are looking at and which is going to be the trigger. So we have all the different supported properties that can serve as trigger. In my case, for this example is status matches this status over here and then what is going to happen after this can be just these three options to send me an email which in in the case that we are talking about is a little bit useless call a webhook or create a page normally what we are going to be using is call a webhook and what is a webhook if you are not into all this nerdy automation world this is basically a way that an app uses to send its data to another app so we are going to be sending notion data to an automation tool which in our case is going to be or Automate.io or Zapier. So yes, we are going to be using two automation tools. One that is going to be reading the statuses in, in our example, but we can do many more things. Then we are going to call a webhook, which is going to be read by any of these two apps. And then in any of these two apps, then we are going to build the whole automation. Okay, this is how it's going to be working. So this was a little bit of the theory behind how everything works and why we need this app and all of this. But now, of course, what is the most interesting thing to talk about are the use cases, also known as how to get the best of this new power that we just got granted. So first use case. So let's say that we have a workflow for our project. The first status is that that project is just an idea. We may or we may not really start working on it. Then the next step is when we have decided to work in this project. And let's say that our projects are standard, so they will all follow the same set of tasks. 
So therefore, we will just want to create those subtasks whenever we have decided that the project is going ahead and not before because we are going to clutter our Notion task database. So in Notion, I have created a very simple system with my projects, let's say consulting client one, this is one project and so far it's in the status of idea. OK, so I will want that whenever this project is confirmed, a set of tasks are automatically created over here related to that project, of course. So let's see how this will be built. Let me give the gist access to here and then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to create a new rule. This is going to be project confirmed in my project database. And let's trigger this when the status matches confirmed and the action that I want is called a webhook. So here I will have to go to automate.io and the reason why I'm choosing automate.io is because what we want is to create the tasks and relate them over here. In Zapier, we cannot really write on relational properties. We just can do it in automate.io. So that's why I'm using the, that tool. So here the trigger will be a webhook and incoming webhook. We will set it up. This is going to give us this code over here. We will just copy it, go back here, paste it and send some test data. Then we will check here. OK, so we have this information and looks good. And that's it. This is all the setup that we need in the gist. Now we are going to start in Automator.io. This webhook is already set. We can see here the output of, of that webhook, so all the different properties that we have got. And now that we have this, which is going to be the information regarding our project, we will create the subtasks, add a new database item. Of course, before this, I will need to give automate.io also um, permission to access these two databases. OK, so that's why it's there. So I'm going to find the tasks database because now I want to create the subtasks. The project over here, it is going to be the outcome of this step. So this page ID will correspond in our case here to consulting client one whenever I set this to confirmed. OK, so this page ID I will just have to put over here and here the name of the task same welcome email, for example. And that is it. We don't have anything else. Of course, if we have more than one task, we can just create as many tasks as we want. And even as we maybe will see later, even this welcome email can be automated. But so far, we will just create it as a, as a task. So let's just save this and turn it on. Now, this is waiting for live data. So let's see how it works. If we set this to confirmed. So I needed to wait for, a, for one minute, more or less and the task gets automatically created and related to the project. OK, how would I do this automation even better? So let's say that this was a, a client that we just closed. So it will arrive here via the webhook from the gist. And for example, the things that we could do is if the client needs to send us some documentation that is going to help us in our project, maybe we can create a Google Drive folder for that client and this is going to give us a URL. As you see here, we can send an email to that client with mm, drop the files here. Of course, let's be more educated. Um, but we will just have to drag here the URL of the Google Drive that we created. So in, in all these examples, the trigger is always the same, just changing the status and then feel creative to create as many tasks as you want. I can give you an example. For example, in here, you can see the amount of tasks that we are creating. The trigger is always a webhook. This is also a status change. And then we are creating all these different subtasks and even at the end, sending an email to one of the employees. So now for our second example, let's say that we have a CRM in which we are tracking when we are talking to each of our clients, but we want to be reminded to talk to them again after seven days, let's say. So we will have this page for the client. This is within a database, of course, and we will have here the date in which we reach the person. And then if we have decided that we always want to reach them every seven days, if we want the gist to be triggered at that time, what we have to do is to create a formula property that is going to calculate whenever more than six days, so seven days, have passed from the moment in which we reach that person. And we use this date between a formula. So whenever this is true, it means that it's passed seven days. And this can be the trigger for the gist. 
So we can see here in the CRM database, when need to reach out is checked. And this is a formula. And we are going to call the webhook. And then in automate.io, this automation is pretty simple. This is the webhook, the same way that we set it up before. And we just send the email with this information, some name, like this is going to be the name of the person, was contacted seven days ago. It's time to give him an ad. Here is his Notion page, because we can get this Notion page from from here, from the page URL. This comes from the, from the webhook. So this is a very easy way to send us notifications when we need to talk to someone. Of course, we can even decide this, this number instead of being here embedded in the, in the formula. We could even create a different property where we are gonna set uh, the frequency that we wanna contact this person and use that frequency in the formula. Okay, we wanna change like instead of seven, like 30 days or something like this. So we can, we can do it this way because in the end, what is going to be the trigger for the gist is just this checkbox. And if you want more examples of things that you can do with this app, Vegis has put together all these different examples of things that you can create with the app, which I'm going to leave in the description of the video. And also, if you want to try this tool out, one automation is for free. And then this is the pricing. So I'm also going to leave the link for this app in the description of the video if you want to check it out. But as you can see, it is free to use with one rule. If you need more than one, then it is $9 per month. I think for the recent clients that I've had in my consulting, I've used this app in almost all of them. And they were all super grateful that this app existed because it has allowed us to automate so many things in the businesses. So you can try it out and let me know in the comments below some ideas of automations that you may create. And by the way, if you like all this automation topic, I have a video over here in which I talk about different ways that I'm using Notion's API to automate Notion even more. So you may check it out. So that is it for this video, guys. And as always, hasta la próxima.